The cat family is extremely diverse and not every member is created equal when it comes to the level of danger posed to the public. Of course, we know leopards are inherently dangerous. Leopards with the scientific name Panthera pardus can sometimes weigh as little as 60 pounds in smaller females, but can weigh up to 200 pounds. More importantly, this opportunistic species regularly preys on medium to large animals and are known for their formidable strength. Then there's the clouded leopard, which is not even in a panthera genus with leopards, lions, jaguars, and tigers. It has the scientific name Neophilus nebulosa, representing a link between the smaller cats of the genus Felis and the panthera genus. The name leopard in this species is just a name. Just like the name of the small Asian leopard cat, it isn't a leopard at all, despite its relatively stocky appearance. These beautiful cats max out at about 55 pounds, but many of them can weigh a lot less. On a particularly unlucky Friday the 13th in January 2023, the Dallas Zoo discovered that one of its two adult female clouded leopards was missing from her enclosure. The zoo took immediate action, closing down the zoo and initiating a code blue, which apparently means that a non-dangerous animal is unaccounted for. This promptly led to reports of a dangerous leopard on the prowl circulating throughout the media, a PR nightmare for the AZA accredited facility. So to clear the air, the zoo had one of its representatives speak at a press conference to inform the public about the details of the situation and the stark differences between clouded leopards and real leopards. I'm the Executive Vice President of Animal Care and Conservation here at Dallas Zoo. I wanted to share an update with you guys, put some rumors to, to bed. First thing this morning, our zoologists found that one of our two clouded leopards was not accounted for. So, so we triggered what we call a code blue, which essentially brings the staff resources that we need to find a non-dangerous animal that's not accounted for. Um, and I'm going to encourage everybody at home to Google clouded leopard, because some of the early accounts say leopard, and a leopard and a clouded leopard are dramatically different animals. So the cat that we're looking for is about 20 pounds, between 20 and 25 pounds. She does not pose a danger to humans. Uh, and more likely than not, when she's scared, she's gonna climb a tree, stay out of our way, uh, hunt some squirrels and birds, and hope not to be noticed. So she does not pose a danger to humans. Wait, so for the record, let's reiterate what was just said here. An exotic cat is not dangerous to the public, as confirmed by a high-level employee of an AZA-accredited zoo, an accrediting body that has supported the Big Cat Public Safety Act, where, according to a few sources, the clouded leopard is apparently banned from being owned by the public you know, to keep us all safe. So this is very interesting. When exotic cat ownership is associated with members of the public, we often hear that such relationships are unsafe and should not be happening. The Dallas Zoo has stated that their clouded leopard, who only weighs about 25 pounds, is not a threat to the public because of its small size, something I've often reported on this channel. But you will rarely see animal professionals say things like this because we're supposed to fear these animals so that no one gets the idea that they might like to own one someday. However, exceptional cases exist, such as this one. When AZA accredited zoos are getting negative publicity and they need to protect their image, all of a the sudden these small cats are not so dangerous. I mean, sure, any sizable animal, even only at around 20 pounds, can be a danger to small children, just as some dogs are, and any animal with teeth and a clouded leopards are pretty impressive, can bite. But for the most part, the chances of something happening are very unlikely. In fact, to my knowledge, I've never heard of a fatal attack from not just a clouded leopard, but servo, caracal, bobcat, lynx, or any small to medium-sized cat. So while a clouded leopard is certainly capable of killing young children, and with the larger specimens, possibly adults, statistics show us that these cats just don't tend to do that for some reason even when they escape from captivity. It would be nice for zoos to acknowledge this, not just when it serves their own interests, but just to put real information out there, regardless of what people might do with it. Furthermore, if clouded leopards are banned under the Big Cat Public Safety Act, they certainly need to be removed from it, along with, in my opinion, cheetahs, which are also popular ambassador animals that are freely interacted with in respected zoos. In fact, it is notable that these cats are not mentioned in the part of the law where it is required to have a sturdy barrier between them and the public, or be at least 15 feet away at all times, even if they are babies. 
there's a reason for this. Other smaller cats that are around the size of clouded leopards are clearly not a danger to the public, so if anyone is planning on adding them to the list to be banned federally, that will clearly be an indefensible action. All the public concern and news reports were not needed. The little cat was located and captured around 4.30 p.m. the same day, without incident. Oh, and get this, they are saying someone intentionally cut the screen, allowing the cat to escape. So, hmm, I wonder what certain moral philosophies might result in someone doing this. Although in one interview, it really sounds like they're trying to blame pet owners for the cat's disappearance. We spend a lot of time interacting with our guests and trying to help people understand why wild animals are not pets. This is not a pet, but there are always going to be folks who are convinced that they want to give it a try. As though people who own exotic pets are so unscrupulous that they just abduct one from a zoo without a thought, and that they're stupid enough to just think they could capture, restrain, and sneak out with a clouded leopard. I just don't understand this logic. Anyway, people should just give the facts when it comes to these animals. Maybe then the knee-jerk reactionary behavior often encouraged by certain animal-owning entities wouldn't come back to essentially, no pun intended, bite them in the butt. I think with zoos, honesty goes a long way.